Hi there, welcome to QA Box. Let's test. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. And if you like the video, give them the thumbs up. All right, so in this video, we are going to see callback functions in much more detail. Though I've already covered this function expression, and therein I have briefly touched upon callback function. Therein I have mentioned that we can pass a function as an argument to another function. That's our callback. All right, so a callback is a function passed into another function as an argument, which is then invoked inside the outer function to complete some kind of routine or action. So I'm into Visual Studio Code and I've created a simple calculate function using function expression syntax. So you could see that this function accepts three parameters. First two parameters are the operands on which we want to perform some kind of calculation. The parameter third is where we are going to mention the operation, whether it's addition or a subtraction or multiplication. All right. So now just to be on the safer side, what we are doing is we are converting this first into a lowercase and then matching it with add. So this is our comparison operator. All right, so I hope you have already watched the operators if else if those videos if not, please go and watch uh, those first All right, so then At the end what we are doing is we are Invoking our function and logging the result onto the console. All right, so calculate 3 2 and add so if we run our program now Let's see what is the output so the output is 5. All right. So now let's convert that function into a callback function. And to do so, what we have to do, we have to say let add is equal to function. And we pass in two values, num1, num2. These are the operands. And then we say return num1 plus num2. Okay. So same way let's create one more function for subtraction and we say sub and this is going to be num1 minus num2 now let's start modifying this program and i'm not going to uh, do this for multiplication uh, you can um, follow the concept so first thing that we are going to do is we are going to change it back to a callback and all we are going to do is return this callback pass in those num1 and num2 and that is it so now here what you have to do is you have to pass in the name of the callback function so now if we run that let's change it to 3 and 6 and we run this let's see what we'll get back so we get 9 back okay so this is the concept of callback function okay uh, so if you change it to sub now you get minus 3 back all right so this callback is being passed as an argument so these are the functions which are being passed as an argument all right as you could see and when they are invoked inside the outer function they complete some kind of routine or action okay so this is callback and in most of the cases you will see that you don't need to provide the name of the function you simply pass in the body of that function okay so how can we do that so all we have to do is here we are going to execute this function okay and this is going to be So if I let's say simply comment this out and pass in this function in here okay and execute that so this is commented out and I'm passing this anonymous function directly because this calculate function outer function 
accepts a callback function okay so when i execute this now we get the same result back all right let's change this to check once again and now we get six back okay so in most of the cases this is how we are going to pass uh, the anonymous function all right so the next example we are going to see is our concept in fact that we are going to learn is the single threaded asynchronous nature of javascript so javascript is a single threaded language this means it has one call stack and one memory heap so most of the time we expect that you know the the code is executed in the synchronous manner right means it executes code in order and must finish executing a piece of code before moving on to the next line of code that's the synchronous nature right but at times it is not good okay so as you know that in javascript we have those javascript engines like you know v8 spider monkey javascript etc you know for uh, processing our our code line by line right now there's another concept java runtime right which has got those uh, you know web api that handle uh, you know these asynchronous tasks in the background the call stack recognizes functions of the web api and hands them off to be handled by the browser if you are working inside the browser or by by node right uh, if you are working inside the node in action practically so i have created a variable let a is equal to 10 all right and this is a set timeout function so let's first understand the uh, you know set timeout function so we say set timeout this accepts two things two parameters first one is a handler which is a callback function and then second argument is it um, uh, timeout okay so let's pass in the function first so this is how we are going to pass the function and then the time so whatever function that we are going to write in here that would be executed after two seconds not immediately okay so let me just say uh, within set timeout okay and let's do one more thing so after this function let's write up the console.log okay and here we say after set timeout okay now let's execute this and see what will happen so uh, if javascript has the synchronous nature then first this will be printed and then this if it has the asynchronous nature this thing would take two seconds before this line is executed so will this be waiting for this to finish or will this be printed first and then this would be printed so let's see so you could see that first after set time out is printed and then after two seconds this within set time out is printed so the runtime is not single threaded okay and this is how things work into javascript so what i've seen um, you know most of the testers make 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 the mistake is something like this so let me open my console so they declare a variable 10 and then in the callback function you know which is asynchronous you know they want to assign the value to this variable from within this asynchronous code and then they immediately uh, use that variable so what will happen in this case so let us uh, run this program you see 10 is printed but this is this is an increment operator 
they should have increased the incremented the value by one so but what happened in here that this is going to take time and in the meanwhile this statement is um, executed all right so this statement has not waited for this to be completed and hence 10 is being printed but once this statement is completed the value of a is incremented so if you check the value of a now it is 11 and not 10 but when this statement was picked the value was still 10 because this was not executed all right so that's the asynchronous nature of javascript and as the testers as the developers we have to understand this concept all right so that's about uh, uh, callback function and asynchronous uh, execution into javascript thank you so much